Hi folks, I'm starting here in chapter 7 of the course packet, which is about hypothesis testing. And we'll kick this chapter off uh, by focusing on a hypothesis, or it's really more of a conspiracy theory, uh, that a lot of fans of the National Football League have. Uh, the uh, picture you see over here on the right-hand side of the page is the head coach of the New England Patriots named Bill Belichick, uh, and he's uh, not a super popular figure in the NFL. You see a lot of sports websites you know, putting uh, stories up like 11 reasons why people hate the Patriots or putting up images like uh, the one over here on the right that juxtapose Bill Belichick in his hoodie against a Sith Lord over here from Star Wars. Uh, so, you know, he's not the most popular person in the world. Uh, and, you know, part of it is because of some of the cheating scandals that the Patriots have had in the past. If you read about football, you may have heard about those. Uh, and I'll give you one example of a conspiracy theory that sort of arose out of the New England Patriots, uh, let's say, uh, history of stretching the truth a little bit. And it's the following. Um, it turns out that if you look during a, a particular 25-game stretch of the 2014 and 15 NFL seasons, uh, the Patriots won 19 out of 25 coin tosses. And if you do the math, that is a 76% winning percentage. Uh, that's a lot more than you would expect. Uh, of course, the coin toss is literally just toss coin in the air, heads or tails, uh, and the winning team gets to decide uh, who kicks off uh, the, the ball game first. Uh, and you'd expect people to win 50% of the time, and the New England Patriots won 76% of the time. Uh, so the question is, is it plausible that the Patriots, as this conspiracy theory would hold, actually cheated at the coin toss? Maybe that Bill Belichick used his Sith-like powers in order to, uh, you know, use the force over the coin. Well, you know, maybe. Uh, but before turning to supernatural explanations, let's look at the evidence first. Okay, the, the question is, how likely is it that one team could win the pregame coin toss at least 19 times in a stretch of 25 games, assuming that there's no cheating going on. Now, we could use probability theory to answer that question very easily, uh, but it's also equally straightforward, if not more so, to use the Monte Carlo method, uh, which is a way of writing a computer program to simulate a random process. So here's what we did uh, to make this figure up here at the top of the page. Okay, uh, this figure was created uh, by, by repeating the following very simple process 10,000 times. Okay, so for each, each of these 10,000 times, uh, these two steps were taken right here. Uh, so first, uh, we simulated a 25-game stretch of coin tosses, okay? And that simulation assumed that the Patriots had a 50% chance of winning each coin toss. Uh, and then out of that simulated set of 25 coin tosses, we just counted how many times uh, out of those 25 the Patriots won the toss. Uh, and so if you're sort of counting up here, that's 250,000 coin tosses that went into making this histogram at the top of the page right here. Uh, that's 10,000 simulations of 25 tosses each. Okay, uh, and what you're looking at here is the probability distribution under those 10,000 simulated runs of 25 coin flips uh, for the number of coin flips that the Patriots won at the beginning of these uh, hypothetical seasons. And you can see, on average, they tend to win about 12 or 13 games. That's the average uh, of 25 coin tosses with a 50% chance of uh, winning. Uh, sometimes they win fewer than 12 or 13. Sometimes they win more. Uh, and yes, you know, sometimes they even do win as many as 19 or even 20 or 21 times out of 25. Uh, and so this, the idea is that this probability distribution here is giving you some context for the number 19. Uh, we can ask the question, how plausible or how likely is it that the Patriots would have won at least 19 coin tosses out of 25 coin flips? Uh, and what you're seeing in this histogram provides the answer. Up to Monte Carlo error, that probability is this red area over here on the right, the probability of getting 19 or more, and that is uh, a little bit less than 1%. It's 0 0.0062, or about 6 tenths of a percent. Okay, so that's a small number, uh, and, you know, that sort of gives grist for the mill for all of the conspiracy theorists in the NFL. Uh, you know, we're not going to kind of weigh into this question if you really want to read about it. You know, I kind of give my little take over here in the footnote as to why it's probably not very plausible that the Patriots actually cheated at this coin toss over here. But rather than focus on the result, what I'd ask you to do here is to focus on the process, because this example here has all of the steps of hypothesis testing, which is the subject of this chapter. Okay, and, and step one is to specify a null hypothesis, and in this case, and we sometimes denote the null hypothesis with a little h sub zero or h naught. Okay, and the word I'm saying there is naught, which is sort of like an archaic word 
It's an A right there, an archaic word for zero, H naught. Okay, uh, and what that null hypothesis is in this context is that the pregame coin toss in each of those Patriots' 25 games was truly random. 50% chance of winning, 50% chance of losing. That's step one. Uh, then step two, uh, we quantify the measure of evidence against the null hypothesis by using a test statistic. Okay, and so here the test statistic was simply the number of Patriots coin toss wins out of 25. Uh, and that measures the bigger that number is, the more likely it is that the null hypothesis is wrong. Step three, uh, we calculate a probability distribution for that test statistic, that is the number of Patriots wins, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. And the way we did that here was pretty straightforward. We, we ran a Monte Carlo simulation 10,000 different times of 25 coin flips each, assuming an unbiased coin, that is assuming the null hypothesis. Uh, and that, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, that probability distribution was exactly what you were seeing in this picture right here. Just this histogram is a Monte Carlo approximation of that probability distribution. And then finally, step four uh, was to use this probability distribution as context uh, to assess whether the null hypothesis looks plausible or believable in light of the data. Uh, and you know, the answer is, is rarely definitive in this. There's always gonna, you're almost always going to be some positive probability associated with your particular data under the null hypothesis. Here that number happens to be small. Uh, we call that number the p-value, as we'll learn later. Uh, and um, this is uh, the context for that number, for the number 19. And so we're kind of mapping things onto a probability scale. So if you're thinking about the steps of hypothesis testing, all four of these steps specifying a null hypothesis here in step uh, one. Okay, let me, uh, let me erase here. Uh, in step one, specify the null hypothesis. In step two, specify a test statistic, in this case, the number of wins. In step three, simulate or calculate in some other way the probability distribution of the test statistic, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. And then finally, use that probability distribution for context to see whether your data is consistent or inconsistent with the null hypothesis. All hypothesis testing have those same four elements, uh, and usually the most difficult part of all is going to be right here in step three, calculating that probability distribution of the test statistic. The essence of the problem is that while for this case we can just flip coins, in most cases we can't. The world is more complicated than coin flips. Uh, luckily, however, there's a very, very general way of proceeding with step three. It's called a permutation test, and that's what we'll learn about in a future video.